Hello everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to another video. Now you're probably familiar with Nvidia's GT1030, an $80 entry level graphics card that launched back in 2017. We covered the good version, the GDDR5 version, not long ago in a gaming revisit. During that video I also mentioned the DDR4 versions of the card which launched the following year and offered inferior performance. The DDR4 versions feature the same 2 gigs of VRAM, but DDR4 is way slower than GDDR5, so the bandwidth drops from 48GB per second to just 16.8. On the plus side, the DDR4 cards have a TDP of just 20 watts, down from 30 on the original, so one of these could be ideal for those who want something that uses even less power. Now that I've given you a bit of context, let's go more in depth about the bad version of the 1030, or more specifically, MSI's version of it, because they broke the mould a bit with this. I said at the start that all GDDR5 and DDR4 versions of this card had 2 gigs of VRAM, right? Well, not this one. This is the low profile passive OC DDR4 card and it features a whopping 4 gigs of memory. From what I can find online, this seems to be one of only two DDR4 1030s with 4 gigs of VRAM, the other being a Max Sun card that I saw on Amazon. The question is, does the extra VRAM help? Did MSI save what some consider to be one of the worst graphics cards in existence by doubling its VRAM? Well, let's get into some gaming tests. The first title we're testing is Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with the low settings. Now this card is definitely better suited to lower settings, or the lowest settings in fact, and you might find that dropping the resolution to 900 or 720p is also a better bet, but I've stuck with 1080p today for the most part. Now, the 2 gig DDR4. 1030 will hit 58 frames per second here with a 1% low of 44 and a 0.1% low of 43. The footage you're seeing is from the 4 gig card. Now the 4 gig DDR4 version of the 1030 MSI's version of the card hit well the same 58 frames per second here. The 1% low was slightly improved up to 45 from 44 and so was the 0.1% low but this is sort of margin of error terror so no noticeable difference in this one. Next up I moved on to GTA 5 Enhanced again at 1080p with the lowest settings. Now you're probably better off playing the original version of the game or the legacy release of GTA 5 but the enhanced version will still run on a 1030 with at least 30 frames per second just about. This card should have been called GT 1030 FPS, although in some cases that still isn't achievable, uh, at least with modern titles. Here though, well, the 2 gig card hit 32 FPS with 1% lows of 24 and 23. The 4 gig card, the card we're using in today's video, also hit 32 frames per second. Again, the 1% low was 24 and the 0.1% low was 23. No difference whatsoever here. Next up, we tested Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, a game that is certainly too intensive for the GT1030 to handle, and even if we were to enable FSR or drop the resolution or both, we still wouldn't get a playable frame rate with either of these. The 2GB card, the model that you're going to find most of the time, the DDR4 version that is, hit 8 frames per second with a 1% low of 6 and a 0.1% low of 5. The 4GB card did do slightly better, 9 frames per second. The percentile lows were also improved up from 6 to 7 in terms of that 1% low and the 0.1% low went from 5 to 7. So not a massive improvement, we're not exactly going from unplayable to playable here but it is worth pointing out nonetheless. Red Dead Redemption now, the original version of the game, because Red Dead 2 doesn't really run that well at all on these cards. We have 40 frames per second uh, with a 1% low of 32 and a 0.1% low of 28 for the 2 gig DDR4 version. The 4 gig version also hit 40 FPS, a 1% low of 33 and a 0.1% low of 30. So a slight difference on paper, but in terms of real world performance, you're not going to notice this. 
For Battlefield 6, I had to drop the resolution scaling to 50%. Now, whether or not we do this at 1080p or 720p, well, it doesn't make a difference. In fact, for some reason, when I dropped it to 50% res scale at 720p, the performance actually became worse. Yeah, not sure why, but there we are. 16 FPS on the 2 gig card, a 1% low of 12 and a 0.1% low of 8. Figures were up slightly on the 4 gig version, 19 as the average. The 1% low was 13 and the 0.1% low was 10. We'll finalise with Fortnite next with performance mode. This is the new performance mode, not the legacy performance mode. The textures and view distances were set to epic and we set the meshes to high. With the two gig version of the card, we hit 41 frames per second with a 1% low of 30 and a 0.1% low of six. The four gig version hit 40 frames per second with a 1% low of 28 and a 0.1% low of three. So this was actually slightly worse this time around. Overall, that was quite underwhelming, but kind of expected. I wanted to make this video in case you're looking for a low cost entry level option and stumble upon one of these. The first thing I should reiterate is that any DDR4 1030, be it the two or the harder to find four gig version that we have here, will be worse than the two gig GDDR5 version across the board. The VRAM is irrelevant when the DDR4 card is being choked by its reduced bandwidth. That's also why the four gig version isn't any better than the two gig card. Or isn't it? Now there were some instances where games, specifically newer and more demanding ones, did appear to utilise the extra memory. Battlefield 6 and Kingdom Come Deliverance are two such examples. Now in these cases, it was still kind of irrelevant because while we did see an ever so slight increase to the frame rate numbers as well as the percentile lows, the actual chip itself, the GT1030 GPU, is just too weak to run these games at playable frame rates anyway. So any improvements we may notice on paper aren't going to translate to real world performance and suddenly turn games from unplayable to playable. So to conclude, did MSI make the terrible DDR4 1030 better by adding an extra two gigs of VRAM to their version of this low profile card? Well, maybe a teeny tiny bit, but in the grand scheme of things, and realistically, not really. Thank you very much for watching. Happy New Year wherever you are in the world. Thank you for all your viewership comments, likes and subscriptions in 2025. I'm still having so much fun making these videos and I never thought that as many of you uh, would still be watching as you are. So yeah, very thankful uh, for all of your support on this channel here. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you again for watching. And all that's left to say is try and avoid the DDR4-1030 if you can, especially as we move into 2026.